we're going to summarize today's session. Um, the reason I came to Paradise today is that I since last week. And just for whatever reason, this happens from time to time in reps. I feel like I forget that. And wedging just becomes a difficulty. When I overthink, it's, it's getting better. Helped me in the past, and I think I talked about this in videos prior, back when I used to train in DC. If I am going to a place where I've had good dentist, if I go to a place where I've had good dental sessions, mentally, I can kind of tune out and just go by feel and move more intuitively. Whereas when I'm in a somewhat unfamiliar environment, I tend to overthink it. So those, while great gym, I enjoy training there. I've done so much of my prep here on these platforms, this much open space. Mentally, I feel a bit different. Session in paradise, session in So I figured, you know, I talked to Steve. I talked to Steve. And I said, I'm going to go to paradise today. My pull's probably going to be a bit worse, like, movement wise, because the Sarah Cook are the shit for um, things. Um, but mentally, I knew it would be better for me. And that's what ended up happening today. I was 26, who incredibly well, very happy with that. I think we're going to finish the prep probably somewhere in the 3.35. Um, and if we look back to previous preps, I mean, whatever I finish my prep with, I'm usually good for 10 years more. Go back to February, see, 2021. Um, finish the prep at 3.25, hopefully, at 3.35 in the tank. Last prep, I finished with a 3.30 pull. Obviously, it only took like a second to have 340. So, if I can finish with a really strong 335 next week, I should be good. I should be good for above 340, which would be incredible. Um, whether or not we have to load that is a different story. You know, we might have to load less, we might have to load something more. I have no idea, but we have to be prepared for anything. And I'm very confident my pulls on me today, so happy about that. Uh, bench. So, if you guys notice the pad that I'm using today on bench is a bit different. This is actually the new TSS pad. Wes Sumter, the owner of TSS, fabricates all of the racks, benches, all that sort of stuff for the gym and then for the TSS equipment brand. And from what I've heard, that's what we're using in Ashley. Wes was kind of Wes was kind enough to send us one to be with Paradise and ask for a review. I think it's fantastic. Um, and from what I hear, this is what we use on one of the other the platforms in Nationals, which is awesome because it is a great pad. ER benches are not the best. Um, so this will be a good bench for everybody. So we're very happy about that. It's good to see the USAPL the quality of equipment. And uh, yeah, I am gonna go home now. I'm gonna go eat. Uh, I'm gonna go do work. And I'll talk to you guys about what I want to talk to you guys about. God damn! Tell me that doesn't look delicious. So for dinner, we got a grass-fed filet with a pasture-raised egg on top, organic orange, organic uh, sweet red onions with organic bell peppers, some pasture-raised ricotta, and some rice. Shit's gonna be good. I'm gonna enjoy this. You know, I'm gonna normally I'd sit down and talk to you guys while I eat, but this is just too beautiful. This is gorgeous. I'm gonna enjoy this. I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I have some exciting news. Okay guys, so, finished eating dinner. Uh, cleaned up the kitchen a little bit. I had way too many dishes to do. I had a bunch of boxes and shit that I had gotten from downstairs, which, my mailing system at this apartment is horrible. Like, my apartment's super great, the amenities are great, whatever, but, they just straight up don't let me know when I get packages, number one. Number two, there are times where I check tracking and it says something's delivered and it's just not in the mailroom. And nobody's stealing it because it'll just show up the next day or two days after. And it's like, I got sourdough that got delivered, man. That shit can't be, can't be waiting. I want it fresh. So that pissed me off. <laughs> I sound like a fucking idiot. But that was annoying. Um, what I wanted to talk about with you guys, I'm asking for your help now. I'm asking for an inquiry. So if you are loyal following my Instagram stories, you probably saw that on Thursday, I made a story or a series of stories inquiring if anybody out there has experience with design, apparel design, graphic design, uh, specifically someone who's worked on apparel and, and fashion before. Because 
What I'm looking for is a creative assistant. Uh, it would be like part-time part -time job obligations, uh, just in terms of, to give you guys an idea of ballpark, like, you know, uh, hours of obligation. But I'm looking for a creative assistant, essentially someone who I can sit down with on calls, you know, get on a Zoom call, and discuss both, like, themes of launches, um, the, like, design year calendar, essentially coming up with a plan for the year, um, go through the design process, all this sort of stuff, because thus far, like, I've done a lot of stuff solo, they're, like, they're pretty much been one designer that I work with, uh, just, like, contracted here and there, uh, but essentially I've been doing this whole process alone, and it's significantly handicapping what I want to be able to do for this brand. Like, I legitimately want, and it could be through Nori Apparel, it could be through the secondary brand that I plan on starting, but regardless, I want an apparel brand that can generate seven-figure revenue annually. I want an apparel brand that reaches the masses of fitness primarily, um, but is, is wearable and desirable in all settings. And this is a goal that I would like to accomplish in the next several years. I want someone who wants to be part of that. Uh, I want someone who respects the brand, who's been around, who knows what I'm about, you know, in terms of my values, my brand, um, and then stylistically can be like, yeah, my work or my talents are relevant or can be, you know, utilized for this brand. And that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking to hire someone part-time as a creative assistant who I can get on calls with, actually go through the design process, plan the calendar for the year, and essentially have this cohesive plan or higher level of organization than I currently have for Nori Apparel. So if this is something that interests you and you have the skill set to do so, if this is something that interests a friend of yours or you have a friend who follows me, knows who I am, but maybe isn't watching this video, let them know. I really, really need help. Uh, my coaching is my primary source of income, as well as where my mental energy is most heavily directed toward. And because of that, apparel is very easy to take my time with and delay things. And I don't want that to happen. I want to be able to have days in my schedule that are specifically allocated toward let us address this, this next series of launches. Let's focus on this, let's come up with a plan, let's have uh, first drafts of things, let's have that set, and then I can turn my brain off, not focus on that, focus on the coaching stuff, and then just have this, this compartmentalized you know, workflow. So, like I said, if this is something for you, please reach out, just email Sean, S-E-A-N, at teamnori.com, send maybe a cover letter, maybe show me some of your work, your portfolio, uh, let me know what your time constraints or obligations are so I can get an idea of what kind of relationship we could have here in terms of how frequently we'd be able to meet and what that would look like. So that's the, the kind of exciting news or, or professional news because this is something, like I said, I really care about. Like this creative outlet for me is huge. You know, acting was that for me in a previous time. I'm not currently doing anything with that because the obligation that it would require of me is not something I'm willing to pursue when the coaching business is going so well. The team that I have of coaches I need to uh, plan seminars with and essentially just, I have a full schedule with powerlifting, right? So having an endeavor that allows me to put creative energy into is what I want and what I need I want to build a brand. So, yeah, that is that. Um, tomorrow's training. Tomorrow's training you guys are going to see in a couple minutes because I'm going to finish talking. We're going to go over the next day of training because that's how videos work. But tomorrow's training, I talked to Steve today, and we decided we're going to squat somewhere around 628-ish. Uh, I should move pretty well if I had to guess, like RP8 and a half. Um, but we'll see. You know, we'll see. Maybe it'll move a little bit faster. Today's session didn't really take a lot out of me, which was nice because I did pull you know, 716, and, um, you know, normally I would say I'd feel beat up, but this is a weight that I'm pulling under fatigue, a weight that I'm pulling, you know, pretty, not casually, but it's moving well. So, that's the plan for tomorrow. Uh, this video will be out for you guys either on Sunday or Monday, so whichever day you're watching it on, the day that it came out, obviously. Well, I guess it could be later, but it can't be earlier, you can't travel in time. 
Anyway, um, yeah, that's the plan. Next week will be the heaviest, the heaviest week of prep for squat and deadlift. Uh, probably finishing somewhere around 738 on deadlift on that Friday session. Probably 650-ish on squat. Um, you know, that's, that's ballpark squat. Probably what we're going to be uh, setting up attempts for on meet day. You know, going for 300 plus would just not be wise. I need to make all my lifts. Um, I think, I think, I feel, I feel good. You know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't be surprised if I were capable of it, but... I fucking hate Sony cameras. I need to upgrade this thing. It ran out of storage. It didn't really let me know. Uh, and it also didn't have the flashing thing above to tell me that there was low storage on the card. So, like I said, uh, you know, I feel great. You know, I think I could potentially, like, smoke 295 be like, damn, I had more. But in these high-profile, like, high-stakes meets, it's just, it's important to not leave things uh, to gamble like that. You know, if I'm flying on meet day, maybe we call an audible if we're really convinced. Um, but that's probably the plan. Uh, for deadlift, 738 is where I'm going to finish next week. I'm going to pull it at Ghost. Uh, like I mentioned, today was just about that familiar environment, turning my brain off and rebuilding that confidence. So next week we'll be back at Ghost. I think I might whip out the singlets. You know, I don't like training in singlets anymore, and I've really grown to like training in leggings. Like the long sleeve and leggings, even though it is Miami, I really, really enjoy it. Just like, they're, the outfit I wear just correlates with confidence very well lifting. Like if I, if I don't like the outfit I'm wearing, I'll just feel like oh, I'm gonna have a worse day. So I think next week though, we'll bring out the singlets. So we'll bring out the, the Titan singlet for squats, we'll bring out the virus singlet for deadlifts, it'll be a good time. The following week, which will put us at two weeks out, is kind of an intensity drop on the end of the week. So like the one week out and six day out, deadlift and squat mark will be lighter than next week. Uh, still pushing the intensity on the middle of the week work so that Wednesday session will still get pushed. Um, and then the actual table will come the week of where I probably will squat and deadlift like 484 and 573 on squat and deadlift respectively on that Wednesday, which should be two days out. Um, so yeah, I have to I have to go. I'm going to go work on apparel stuff now, funnily enough. Um, and then I'll probably do some reading before bed. This is the Practicing Stoic. Um, one of my friends lent it to me at the gym. So that is going to be huge. I'm only about, where was I? 29 pages in, so have a lot of work to do on that, but uh, yeah, I'm just enjoying reading it for for leisure. Um, I don't know if any of you have experienced this with like gone through like a rigorous academic system where like you start to read and you feel in your brain like this sense of urgency where you're like, oh, I need to read it faster because you have like a deadline or you, you know, need to get a certain amount of work done at a certain time, and it like takes enjoyment away from reading. And then when you like reset your brain and you're like, okay, asshole, like, there's no reason you have to finish this book quickly. Like, just relax, enjoy it. it, makes the reading process so much less stressful, and then as a result, you end up reading faster anyway, because you're just more relaxed. Anyway, that's my ramble. I'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs>
next day. What's up guys? I apologize. I apologize for being late with this video. Um, <laughs> I had a very busy weekend and I didn't get a chance to really film like a recap of the end of last week, but I figured I'd go through it now. So uh, squats, like again, like we're just the theme. I'm just going to keep saying it is like exceeding expectations. Um, 628 moved phenomenally well. Uh, my last warm up of 595, like it was okay, you know, Wednesday squats are definitely the big performer right now, and I also have deadlifts on Wednesday and then Friday deadlifts, so there's a lot of stress and acute fatigue coming into Saturday, and to hit 628 like that is pretty wild. Uh, so we're already at Monday, so happy Monday for everybody watching this, although you'll probably be seeing this Tuesday morning, but I'll give you guys a summary of what this next week is going to be. So this Wednesday, will be uh, a triple on squat in the 606 to 611 range. The deadlift will be probably a set of nine around 573, a set of four around 661, 300 kilos. Wednesday, or sorry, Friday and Saturday will be the heaviest deadlift and squat of the prep. So somewhere in the 738 range on pulls, and then somewhere in the 650 to 655 range on squat, probably erring on the side of being conservative with squat around 650, just owning it. Um, I honestly can say this is like the most unperturbed and unbothered I've been uh, in any prep. You know, it's been just, I'm enjoying making these videos because it gives me this moment of being very introspective and just being able to talk about these things because I find myself very frequently just trying to take things day by day and in some moments, you know, when there's hype built up or there's a conversation being had or there's a big set that I hit or, you know, whatever, the hype can build up, the excitement can arise. And I think that I've become very well calibrated in terms of understanding when that's facilitative of good patterns and behaviors for me and when it's not. 
And I've just kind of gotten to the point where I'm like, all right, I need to diffuse that. I need to keep it uh, under the surface until it's necessary to be aroused and alert and all that sort of stuff. So being able to just like talk through these things because obviously I'm, you know, going through my days, there's a lot of stuff on my mind, there's a lot of stuff I have to do, being able to just just talk it out and get it out on video for you guys is pretty, pretty sweet. So uh, I have some awesome, like awesome, awesome news. Um, if you guys remember the last video, I talked about how Keanu, uh, who's one of our Hawaii guys, was going to film for us. Unfortunately, he's not going to be able to make it because of work obligations. However, uh, my buddy Sue Tran, his Instagram is Sue.Tran, S-U period T-R-E-N. He is going to be my videographer for Nationals, and then he is also going to be the team photographer and videographer. So the plan is to get him a media pass. He's also going to be working for 110% during the competition, which is cool because there's overlap between 110 athletes and my roster. So it's going to be easy for him to get shots of who he needs to for Kevin Papa, as well as for me. Um, but Sue is incredibly, incredibly talented and he's just such a good dude. If you don't follow him, you absolutely should follow him. Like the dude is incredibly talented, especially with photography. So he is going to be documenting this process. We're going to shoot a pretty cool meet video. I have ideas for the direction of it. Uh, I'm going to try to produce it and give him like a, an abstract or like first draft storyboard for how I want the video to go. Um, but I want to bring you guys a really, really nice production for this year's Nationals. Um, I'm really excited. I'm really excited, but I'm very... I'm trying to think of a word. It's like reserved. Reserved with the excitement. You know, it's like, like all right, it's coming. You know, Nationals is here. We're like two weeks out. Like, it's, it's here. Um, but I'm just like, okay. Like, this is... It's just a training day. You know, it's just go in make the lifts and that's all you can really ask for. Um, I talk to Steve pretty much every day. He does a fantastic job of keeping me even keel mentally. You know, I think there are some people out there who need coaches to like motivate them. And I need Steve to just like be very, very grounded with me. I think his objectivity is his strong suit and, and what makes this relationship very compatible. Um, because I don't need someone to be firing me up. I think that only makes things worse. So, yeah, Steve, I know you're watching this. You're the fucking man. I love you. Um, yeah, I'm going to start cooking. Uh, I'm going to listen to the Two White Lights podcast um, because they covered the 82 and a half kilo weight class. I want to hear what they have to say about the class, what their predictions are. So uh, I'm going to eat real quick. Maybe I'll show you guys what I'm, what I'm making for dinner. Probably give you a little quick sneak peek. And then I'm going to watch the podcast. And then, uh, and then I have a call with one of my lifters. And then work for the rest of the night. That's usually my days. You know, I'm, I get up, I work, you know, I usually wake up pretty late because I go to bed pretty late, uh, but I work, I go to the gym, I come back, I work, or I eat, I work, and then go to bed. And that's pretty much my days, except when I'm going out. But, you know, uh, a lot of my friends have had, you know, some obligations lately, and then obviously we're getting close to Nats, so, you know, the, the free time stuff is not really taking as much of a priority, although I am making time for it still, which is something I wouldn't do in the past, you know, in general, much less at this point um, in prep, but things are feeling good, man. Maybe I'll have a, a nice shot of whiskey the week of the meet, maybe two days out, just as like a, a toast, a uh, toast to good fortune on meet day and just to relax, you know, we'll see, but things are good, man. I'm saying man as if I'm talking to one person, but I feel like I'm talking to, to you whoever you may be listening to this, um, you know, I enjoy, I enjoy talking to you, you, you right there, you're the fucking man or woman, I love you, you guys are great, all right, dinner time. Remember I coach him? Yeah. Yeah, if, 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 some, if someone's listening and doesn't realize I coach Sean, and they think I just hate Russ, I do coach Sean, so, I mean, yeah. I hope I pick him. Yeah. John, yeah. Russ, Angelo. One, two, three. All right, I'm actually really nervous to get this one because I want to work at Corrupted Classic and I don't want to set some people. Um, I am going to go... I'm going to go Sean Noriega first. 
the last year I said if I closed my eyes, I saw Russ winning it. This year, if I closed my eyes, I seen Sean Noriega. And also, I want to give you guys the reason. The reason why I'm picking Sean Noriega. Sean at Collegiate Nationals messaged me and was like, hey man, you want to meet up and get a cigar later? Sean Noriega of 2020 would, or 2020 and 2021 would have not have asked you that question. He wanted to get a drink and a cigar. He is so wired in, he's so focused that he doesn't do anything that, you know, potentially could hurt training going forward. That is telling me Sean Noriega is a little bit more unbothered. That tells me something, and I think his training is reflecting that. I do see a little bit more of a calm, Less neurotic, Sean Noriega, and then I'm like, all right. So I that was a really interesting summary to listen to. And, you know, I obviously feel like I've made some pretty serious changes to how I approach my day to day. Honestly, it's been almost like an, a complete overhaul um, in temperament. And it's interesting to hear a fellow competitor, because obviously Angelo is the host or co-host of Two White Lights, but to hear a fellow competitor feel it, it's, uh, it's confirming, I think would be a way to phrase it. You know, I, I've done a good job throughout my career, even in a much more neurotic era, to not really put too much stock in, in, in predictions and stuff like this, because I'm aware that everything has to unfold on the day, and it's only after it unfolds you can draw any sort of conclusions or confirm whether you were right or wrong. And everyone, based on what they've seen, based on their own biases, is going to have opinions. They're going to have strong opinions, and sometimes those opinions are right, sometimes those opinions are wrong or you know better founded or worse founded than others. But it's, uh, it's always just interesting. It's, it's always interesting to listen to them because, you know, I, regardless of, of what I think is, is going to happen and regardless of what anyone thinks is going to happen, um, we won't know until it all unfolds. But I'm, I'm just here to tell you that I am calm, I am unbothered, and when I show up on meet day, that's not going to change. We're going to do everything as we've been doing it. We're going to take it one lift at a time. And that is the formula to move closer and closer to the best possible outcome in anything that you do. You know, you only have the present moment. You only have the present moment. That is all you have. You do not have the past. The past is gone. The future has not yet happened. And you will never know what is going to happen in the future. And worrying about it is going to stifle you. You will stumble in the present trying to chase the future. You only can focus on what you have in front of you. And what I have in front of me now is work, I have sleep, and I have tomorrow's bench session. That's what's in front of me right now. I'm going to do everything I can to have the best possible night of sleep, night of work, and Tuesday session. And then I'll go to bed and do it all over again for Wednesday. I think that's where I'm going to end this video, guys. As always, Get to like, comment, share, subscribe. Remember, there are no bad days. And I'll see you all in the next video. Take care.